for those of you who follow me on Instagram, you already know what this video is about. But for those of you who don't, introducing my new IWI Galil Ace pistol. Chambered in 762 by 39 Check this out. First thing I'm going to start out this video with is I really, really don't like AKs or any kind of AK variant. I really haven't ever found one that I really enjoyed. No, the Galil is not an AK and I'm not saying that it is, but in general, any rifle that is kind of built around that same premise, it's never really agreed with me. I never really liked the right hand charging handle. On standard AKs, I really didn't like that the dust cover was usually super floppy and it wasn't really modular. It was more difficult to get optics on top of an AK. They've got a short sight radius. There's a bunch of different things that I really didn't like about that kind of a design. And yeah, there is the argument that the AK is pretty much bulletproof and it's gonna run in all kinds of scenarios. And that is true. So there's definitely, I have some respect for the platform, just never was for me. And as I was looking for my next build or my next pistol or rifle that I wanted to get my hands on, I definitely hadn't initially, at least not at first, thought about the Galil. But I knew I wanted to get something from IWI, and I was initially leaning toward the X95, but then I started thinking about the Galil, and it really appealed to me. I started reading into it, studying up on it. Some of the things that I really liked about it right off the bat was the fact that it has a flat upper receiver that has a Picatinny rail section the whole way. Um, and you'll notice I don't have any optics on this right now. It's just running the factory iron sights. But this gives you the ability to run not only an optic back here on top of the dust cover, which is solid, by the way, but you could also run pressure pads then up front or some other accessories if you decided you wanted to. So that was the first thing that stood out to me. The other thing that I always knew about the Galil was the fact that the charging handle is actually on the left side. And for a right-handed shooter, that just to me is super natural that I can just work the action without actually breaking my trigger hand or without having to reach over and manipulate the charging handle from the opposite side. One of the other things that I knew to be true about the Galil Ace was the fact that it had a pistol brace and it had a side folder on it already. And I also knew that because it has a similar action to an AK, it has some of the roots based in the same kind of concept, I knew that it was fire folded as well. So all of that appealed to me in a lot of different ways. And on top of that, I looked at this as an opportunity to get my hands on a platform that I have no previous training with whatsoever. Videos you're seeing on the range and all the B-roll are actually some of the first times I've ever run this platform at all. By and large, I shoot AR-15s and I shoot Glocks, and that's what I enjoy the most. So it was a good opportunity for me to get my hands on something that was unique. So I talked about a couple of the features, but I'm gonna, gonna dive a little bit deeper into this. Everything from operating it to maintaining it, super simple. I'm not gonna dive into all of the how it works kind of stuff, I'm gonna let that up to you guys. There's plenty of content online and it comes with a manual in the box. Um, and it's gonna show you exactly how to take the dust cover off, clean it, lube it, all that good stuff. But again, if you're familiar with AKs or anything similar to that variant, this is going to be pretty familiar to you. Besides the fact that it has a left 
left side charging handle. It has this ambidextrous safety. I like to flip the safety off with my thumb. And then when I'm ready to go back on safe, I just raise my pointer finger. And to me, that is the best relationship between going from safe to fire and then fire back to safe. It's as easy as pushing out, click, the round's going to cycle, flip it up on safe. Um, up front, there's a handguard. If you press this button on all three sides and slide up, you can actually remove these plastic sections and it's going to leave you with a Picatinny section that you could put a flashlight or some other accessory or device on there. So that's pretty cool too. And like I said, there's three sections there that it is going to have that feature and that function. Right out of the box, this gun came with the iron sights. Like I said, it's got a post front, which has a tritium insert, and then it's got a ghost ring sight on the back. And on the ghost ring sight on the back, there's also two tritium inserts. So in low light conditions, they do really stand out and they could help you get back on target. I'm going to always throw the argument out there that you probably shouldn't be relying on your tritium sights to help you get the sight picture at night. For me personally, I'd rather have a flashlight, some kind of weapons mounted light on the gun itself and then just hit something um, with 400 plus lumens and then light it up so I can actually see what I'm shooting at. Upon unboxing this, uh, I noticed it had a standard fl style flash hider which would be perfectly fine for most scenarios and most people. Nothing wrong with that at all. What I did is I actually removed that and put on my ASR flash hider so I could run my suppressor. This is kind of unique. It has a locking nut on the end and that locking nut on the barrel allows you to actually clock a muzzle device. So you can actually put your muzzle device perfectly lined up. Um, if it's a brake, you can put the ports the right way. If it's a flash hider, you can put the openings up and then just tighten the nut on the barrel to the back of the muzzle device and that's going to perfectly clock your device. And many of you that have had an AR-15 with a crush washer know that sometimes if you overdo it the first time, it's really hard to get it back into position. You can't really, can't really back off of a crush, crush washer and then tighten back down. So bringing up that point, this thing does suppress well with my Silencer Co. Omega suppressor. I just thread it on here and I go to town. And this thing barks right out of the box with the factory flash hider or even my ASR flash hider here. This thing's really, really loud, so make sure you're wearing Ear Pro. I would never, ever want to shoot this gun without Ear Pro. It is a beast. The suppressor does tame it down a lot, but I am going to say that it really doesn't make it hearing safe. And I didn't do any conclusive tests on that other than the fact that I shot it with my suppressor without ear pro and my ears were ringing like crazy. So I just kept the ear pro on in all the videos and ran with it like that. You're going to notice in the videos that it ran almost 100% perfectly with a suppressor. When I first pulled it out of the box, I did have a couple malfunctions when I started running the suppressor. After those initial malfunctions, I tore, tore the gun down, lubed everything up, made sure everything was cleaned up and then I ran about 300 to 350 rounds out of it suppressed and no longer had any more issues. So I do believe that this is going to be a reliable gun even with a suppressor even though it is a 762 by 39 and it is only an 8.3 inch barrel. I've had good luck so far and honestly it is much much nicer shooting it with the suppressor. When it comes to actually shooting this gun it is a very quick handling little gun. It's very easy to point and get in on it. The trigger on this thing is actually surprisingly good for what it is. Let's see if I can show you the reset. The reset's long, but the trigger is very, very clean. And I was actually very impressed with this trigger right out of the box. So that's definitely something to note. It made shooting this gun much more enjoyable. I really did expect that right out of the box you'd have that mil spec AR feel trigger where it just feels like it's 25 pounds and gritty. On the end of the gun, there's obviously a pistol brace here. On the side, it's branded IWI, but if you look on the back, it says SB Tactical. So it's definitely an SB brace. It would work very well strapping it on your arm if you wanted to shoot it one-handed. With this feature, it is maintaining its status as a pistol, so you don't have to go through that pesky Form 1 process for a short barreled rifle or a Form 4 if you're buying it already assembled direct from IWI. So really quick, running through a bunch of positives about this that I really found enjoyable about the gun. For one, it's a very comfortable gun to shoot. Another thing that I really liked was the trigger. The trigger is a two-stage trigger and it feels really nice right out of the box. It's definitely not the lightest trigger you're ever gonna find. 
but it doesn't have that AR-15 mil spec grit heavy feel that I was really nervous that it would have. The next thing that I really enjoy about this is the fact that it's got a dust cover and a left side charging handle. To me, that's priceless. Add on top of all of that that the dust cover is actually rigid on this, unlike most AKs that I've used, and it has a full pick rail on the top, which means a lot of different opportunities for optics and accessories. Another awesome trait about the Galil is the fact that it has a 5.8, 24 pitch thread on the barrel. That is insanely awesome. That let me run my ASR flash hider, which in turn let me easily thread on my Silencer Co. Omega suppressor. Another thing I really liked about this was the fact that if you pull these covers off the side, there's pick rails on all three sides of this um, foregrip. I also found it extremely awesome that it comes right from the box with a folder and a pistol brace. I also really enjoy that it has an ambi safety on it. A couple things that I really didn't like about it, but I knew about before I even pulled the trigger on this thing, was the fact that it does not have last round hold open. And this is something that maybe means too much to me and it shouldn't, but it really in 2019 doesn't make sense to me why a weapon would not have the ability to lock open on the last round. To me, in a life or death scenario, it just seems silly that the gun could ever, by design, do this. To me, that just gives you that split second time where your brain goes, oh crap, I have to reload. And yes, you should be training through that, and I actually found that on the range it wasn't nearly as hindering as what I originally thought it would be, but it's still a minor annoyance to me, so I'm going to put that as a negative against this pistol. The other thing that I don't like about this caliber and this style of firearm is the fact that the magazines are curved and you have to rock them into place. So it's just not, to me, as quick as just shoving an AR mag right into the mag well and it just clicks right into place nice and smooth every single time. Definitely not a terrible thing. It's just something I have to work through. The only other two drawbacks that I would say about this platform is the piston is not adjustable and you cannot change out the pistol grip, to my knowledge, unless you would change this whole polymer lower section. But honestly, I'm just nitpicking this thing, and I like it way more than I dislike those little couple things. The Galil's offered in a bunch of different calibers. Check out their website. You're gonna see all the different options, the different barrel lengths and all that stuff. I really like the idea of a 7.62 by 39. It's a potent little caliber, and it's cheap. I bought steel case ammo, I ended up paying about 18 cents a round, bought a thousand rounds. So around 300 rounds is going to cost me somewhere in the ballpark of 60 bucks to shoot, which is incredible. That Honestly, that's cheaper than the 9mm I bought recently. So for a practice gun, or a truck gun, or a home defense gun, this thing is fantastic. I've got a lot of plans for it, and honestly, I think with this gun, I'm going to keep it pretty much 100% stock. I don't know that I'm going to throw a light on it. Eventually, I foresee myself putting some kind of an optic on, but if I do, it might just be a red dot or something of that nature. But it's exciting to me to get my hands on something new, to show it to you guys, to run it, to learn it. Um, I think it's important that we don't sit idle, that we always are looking for other ways to improve our skill set and to get our hands into things that we haven't used previously. There you have it. That's my first impression, my initial rundown of this Galil Ace pistol. And you're going to be seeing a lot more content on my Instagram about this gun because I truly do enjoy it. Guys, if you like the video, leave a comment below. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. Hit that little bell icon so that you get notified whenever I do videos. And then if you have questions or you want to reach out to me personally, my email is in the about section on my YouTube page. You can find it there. And also, feel free to shoot me an email and then make some suggestions on video topics that you would like to see me cover. Guys, until next time, stay well, stay safe, and I will see you in the next video.